Sometimes it's difficult for us to change our minds about something. And for me, it's sort of taken a lifetime to get there about something in particular. And I know why that is. We've been programmed to think about things in life a certain way and, and taught that, that these assumptions are, are necessarily true, but maybe they're not. Sometimes for our own good and for the good of other people, maybe we need to change the way we think about some things. And today I want to talk about one of those things in particular. As I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. We pretty much all grew up thinking about God in a certain way, that God is somehow supernatural out there, that God's a he, and that God has certain attributes that we've given him, that God is all powerful and all knowing and all seeing and and that God controls everything, and that if we ask in just the right way, maybe God will do things in our favor or the way we want them. In all of this, we've thought about God as a noun, as a static being, just like us with certain characteristics and attributes, just like I have certain characteristics and attributes. We make God out to be just like us in many ways. But I don't think that's quite right. I don't think God is a noun. Instead, I think it's more helpful to think about God as a verb. I learned growing up that a verb is the action part of a sentence. It's the thing that puts things in motion. It's energy, it's movement. And that's what God's about. God is a verb. Now, some people think that things I say are a little bit heretical, or, or maybe even a lot heretical, I don't really know. But this is not one of those things. This is very true and found in all the world's great religious traditions. And I want to start with Judaism and, and the Hebrew scriptures to help us understand this concept. There's the story in the Hebrew Bible, in the book of Exodus, where Moses goes up a mountain and sees the burning bush and asks God, what's your name? And God says, I am. I am. It's a statement of, of being a verb. It's not about being a he or a she, or it's instead existence, a statement of being, that I exist, I am. And this is very reflective of what's found in also in the Hebrew Bible, in the book of Genesis, where everything that exists comes into being through something called dabar, D-A-B-A-R. This dabar is creative energy. It's the source of all that is. And this is the essence of God in the book of Genesis. Unfortunately, this word, dabar, has been translated very poorly, first into Greek that didn't have a parallel word. And so in Greek, it became logos. And then we translate logos into English as word. And ever since, we keep thinking that when the Bible talks about the word, it's talking about the Bible itself, the book. But that's not the connotation. The word is dabar. It is the creative energy, the source of all that is, the source of all being. And that is the essence of God. Christian theologians in the first millennia understood this and in fact articulated this perhaps most clearly in the work of Thomas Aquinas in the Middle Ages. Aquinas in his Summa Theologica explained that God cannot be contained in heaven. We can't put a limit on God. We can't put him in a place. Instead, God cannot be contained in heaven. But that wherever God is, God is fully present. God isn't in heaven. God isn't in a church. God isn't here. God isn't there. Instead, wherever God is, God is fully present. And that God exists wholly, entirely, as one. So that wherever God exists, God is fully present as one. And Aquinas concludes 
that God is existence. God is existence. Wow, that's mind-blowing. What Aquinas is saying is everything we experience in life, every aspect of our life, every aspect of everything that is in the cosmos is God. And that's really powerful for us. You know, we sometimes think that indigenous peoples of the world, whenever they talk about a rock or a mountain being sacred, that that's nice and prosaic, but they don't have a modern understanding. In fact, they have the same biblical understanding that everything is sacred, that everything has a living energy to it. And Aquinas was saying that this existence, this energy is God, and that's reflected of the Hebrew scripture. Further, this idea is found within Taoism, where all of life is an, a flow, an energy, and that our role in life is to get into that flow, to go with the energy, to be one with it, because it's already there in nature, and we're the ones who stand apart. This is also found in Zen Buddhism, where the nature becomes a very important teacher for how it is that we be present and mindful. It's found within Hinduism, in the Brahmin tradition that understood this energy and creation and existence. And we lost it in our modern understanding. And we tried to define everything in our lives and including God and scientifically dissect everything into parts. But that doesn't help us because it misses the essence of the divine, which is energy, which is action, which is existence. God is a verb. God is the action part of life. When we change how we think about God from being a noun out there in heaven who interacts with us, to being existence itself. How we understand ourselves and our life and our relationships and our experiences, as well as how we understand everything in the cosmos, from rocks and trees to butterflies and fish and everything that is out there that we don't yet understand. We begin to see our opportunity for experiencing the divine in the good and the bad and the things that confuse us and the things that remain mysteries to us. And that appreciation draws us further and further into our own growth, growth as human beings, growth as spiritual beings, growth in our relationships, growth in every aspect of our life. So today I want to invite you to consider what it means for God to be a verb, and as Aquinas said, for God to be existence. And as you do, consider leaving me some comments, ask some questions. Let's have some dialogue about this. And be sure to subscribe to this channel, share it with others, and know that I appreciate the time you spend on spirituality beyond borders. Thanks, have a really great day.